my dad was a Mennonite pastor. And the idea that you would be paid for something that you really understood as a ministry gift was just unfathomable. I mean, we didn't do that. Things that were in ministry, we did not charge for those. It's part of being the part of the body, as you described. And it's only those things that we did that had no connection to our spiritual walk where we could charge. If that's milking cows and selling you know, that or building furniture or whatever, that's okay. But that's different. That's not, our, that's not our spiritual life. That's not our ministry gifts. So it wasn't without a lot of trepidation that I moved gently into this. But there was so much immediate affirmation. There was the confirmation immediately that, oh, so you're not just a nice guy at church. You really are a professional. I could really take what you're saying seriously at this point. There was an immediate affirmation that this had more value when I charged for it than any time previously. And it really opened my eyes to some of the dynamics that were occurring. It's fascinating to me that you uh, said there was, after you did it, an immediate affirmation. Almost, it sounded like you took the step of faith first and then got the affirmation. So I'm curious to know, if you put that in slow motion, what was it you were saying to yourself to go up to that very first person and for the very first time saying, I'd love to help you. By the way, here's what I charge. Right. And I was very thoughtful about that process because I had been for so long doing it free. And I was concerned that there was going to be pushback. Okay, now you're just becoming materialistic and greedy, where instead of just using a gift that God has given you to help the body, you know, now you're going to you know, buy a new Mercedes with it or whatever. But I didn't approach it like that. And because I was spending so much of my time doing that, it seemed clear that God has opened the door for me to spend even more time in doing that. And so to be a faithful provider and responsible provider for my family, there had to be some kind of economic model connected to it. So I put it on paper. So it kind of removed it from me personally saying, okay, now I'm going to charge you. But simply to say, when somebody asked if they could get together with me personally, I'd be delighted to do that. And I pull out a sheet of paper and says, here are the ways I typically work with people. Which of these would work best for you? And I was amazed to find that almost immediately people were going to the most expensive option that I had, recognizing that in our culture, there's a clear connection between cost and perceived value. If something has no cost, it probably doesn't have a whole lot of value. So if I'm coaching somebody just as a friend and I suggest that they go out and uh, identify 30 prospective employers tomorrow, I think, well, whatever, you know, Dan's a nice guy, but I'm really not going to do that. If they have paid me for that advice, chances are exponentially higher that they're going to implement and act on what my advice was. I realized how I had been disserving people not serving them well, I had been reducing the amount by which I could actually help them by not charging. And it really helped me kind of not rationalize and justify, but to understand the dynamics of what was happening and move into that very comfortably. And and that has been confirmed again and again and again, not only in the work that I do, but in other coaches that I interact with. 